All right, class, here we are with the final exam review questions. Um, I did send you the PDF of on which this is uh, recorded from, so you can have access to the questions and the solutions. The first question is actually a very simple question dealing with substitution. They just want you to express this as a simplified fraction. They give you f of x is equal to x over 7 minus x and they want you to find the fraction uh, substituted as negative 4 fifths. So f of negative 4 fifths is equal to negative 4 fifths over 7 minus minus 4 fifths keyword double negative don't forget that so as we simplify this uh, we need a common denominator on the bottom so this is over 1 so we'll multiply by 5 on both both sides of the 7 over 1 and now we have uh, basically negative 4 fifths divided by remember double negatives become a positive so you end up with 39 over 5 the rule of thumb is when you divide two fractions, we're going to keep change flip. So keep four fifths, change, and flip. So if you notice, the fives will cancel across, leaving you negative four over 39. Simple as that. All right, question number two. In question number two, they give you a diagram. I would ask you to please refer to the diagram. I'm going to basically try to re recreate it here. We have an open hole at the origin. Uh, and then here, at number six, it's a Y is six. Um, we have a solid dot, and it goes up to ten. Um then it asks you, uh, use the graph to evaluate the indicated limit and function value or state that it does not exist. And they want you to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 0. So they basically want what is the value of f of 0, which we know in this case has to be 6. So this would be the limit as x approaches 0. Remember, this is not from the right, this is not from the left. This is just plain old, the limit as f of x is 0. And our answer uh, is as such, where f of 0 is equal to 6. Uh, number 3 is very similar on your handout. Again, please refer to your handout because this is all based on that. So for number three, we have given that the limit of f of x, some random function, um, as x approaches 2 is negative 2. And the limit of g of x is equal to 5 of it as x approaches 2. They've given us uh, the task to find the limit as, a, as x approaches 2. And they're giving us the function g of x minus f of x, all of this over negative 4 times f of x. Okay, and so in this case, we would say, well, then uh, 5 minus negative 2 divided by negative 4 times negative 2, which reduces to 7 over 8. Once again, refer to the handout that I provided for you for the final exam review. Question number 4.
It says find the limit if it exists there as x approaches 5. So find the limit as x approaches 5. And they're giving us x minus 5 over the absolute value of x minus 5. And so in this case, we, we can tell that um, the denominator can never be 0. So in this case, the limit does not exist would be your answer choice. All right, question number five. Question five and six, I'm asking you to look at the graph. And in essence, what you have, uh, they give you the graph. Uh, they say to you, this passes through positive three and negative 3. And at x is 1, we have 4. And it's solid. So this is going as such. The other uh, consideration is at x is 3, and uh, x is 1, y is 3, you have an open line angling sort of this way towards 5. If you want to find the limit mm -mm, as x approaches 1 from the left. And so if I'm approaching from the left, so I'm coming this way. As I'm approaching from the left, I could see that the value for f of x would be 4. So 4 would be your answer. Question number six, use a graph to find the limit of f of x. So the limit of f of x as x approaches two from the left. And this is giving us two vertical asymptotes at uh, two and negative two. So at x is 2, we have a negative 2, we have a vertical asymptote, and x is 2, we have a vertical asymptote. We know that inside of here, so I'm just going to draw this in red, so inside of here, this is um, behaving as such. And on this side, we have this behavior and this behavior. So they're asking us, as x approaches 2 from the, from the left, what is happening? As you can see, I'm approaching 2 from the left. I'm going to do this in blue. So I'm approaching 2 from the left. It looks to me like this is going down towards negative infinity. So you would answer negative infinity. I think I see that here. That's where you want to focus on. All right. Question number seven. If, if the limit at infinity exists, so you have the following equation. If the limit as x approaches positive infinity, given the equation 5x squared plus 7x minus 9 divided by negative 6x squared plus 2. Okay, remember the rules when we talked about m is equal to n as in the exponents versus m is greater than n versus m is less than n. So if you notice in this case, both of these are x squared 
and we're reaching positive infinity. So all it is is this number is getting, in this case, very small. And the reason for that being that the denominator is increasing to infinity. So our value, because we have um, two equal um, powers, would be negative 5, 6. which are basically the leading coefficients of both of those. All right, number seven. Number eight is coming up. In number eight, you want to find the vertical asymptote of the graph of the given function. So you have f of x is equal to x squared minus 100 divided by x minus 9 and x plus 3. They couldn't have made this question any easier. All you do is look at the denominator and you see that you end up with a positive 3, I'm sorry, a negative 3 and a positive 9. And that would be uh, your choice, your answer choice. Just look at the denominator, factor it, if they give it to unfactored. All right, question number nine. The question is, is the function continuous? At x equals zero. And if you look at it carefully, you have a graph where uh, I guess at negative 1, 1, there's a, a solid dot, and then it goes through. This value here, it does have another little uh, graph going this way. Again, refer to your page. The question is, is it continuous at 0? And the answer is yes. You don't know, lift your pencil. Everything is good. Pen or pencil. Okay, number 10. Determine where the function h of x, so they give us the function h of x is equal to, and we have x squared plus 7 over x squared plus x minus 6. So in this question, the first thing you want to do is, is the denominator something you can factor? And I'm looking at the denominator and I'm thinking, well, if I have x plus 3 times x minus 2. So negative 3 and positive 2 are values we're going to take a look at. I, I would also ask you to remember the number line. You can always use the number line, the negative 3 and positive 2 which gives us three areas that we need to check remember the test points so technically this would be continuous from negative uh, infinity to negative 3 union negative 3 to 2 that's where your vertical asymptotes uh, are negative 3 and positive 2 respectively union two comma infinity. If that doesn't make sense to you, I will ask you go out to Desmos. So let's take a look at Desmos. All right, so I'm just going to put in our function, which is um, x raised to the second plus 7. And this is going to be divided by uh, I want to do x squared plus x minus 6. And that's what that looks like. So if you notice that at um, 
let's see here. So let's do x equals negative 3. Let's do another one at x equals 2. And you can see those are the two vertical asymptotes, the blue line and the green line. And that's where our, our, fa our function is um, not continuous. So if I'm looking at the progress as this function is being looked at uh, through the lens of a limit at, say, x is 2, if I'm coming from the left, I'm coming this way. If you notice from the left that I don't even reach x is 2 and I'm dropping to negative infinity, similar to the last question we looked at. All right. Let's take a look at question 11. Actually, question 11, they're asking you to use a graphing utility. And again, these types of questions where you have to have a graphing utility, I may not require of you. And so we want to find the partition numbers. And so very similar to the previous question, except you're going to have, in this case, because they give you um, the function, I'll give it to you anyway so you can look at it. So here's a function x to the fourth minus 8x to the second minus 4x plus 4. I'm sorry, plus 1. Um, when you look at this question, it looks looks mild. It doesn't look very difficult. But the partition numbers um, are decimal-based. So you end up with, um, when you factor this, you end up with negative 2.4. I guess 796 if you round it, and you end up with uh, 0 0.7203, and that's one partition. And remember, it would always come from negative infinity to the negative 2.4796, and this would be union. union, the negative 2.4 again, to 703, union, again, it would start with 0.7203, and then um, you would have um, 0 0.1832, and then union, uh, 0.1832, comma, and then it ends at 3.8. 0347 and you would use a graphing utility just to find those numbers which is uh, a little daunting I may not include something like this so consider this question to be a not not really something I would focus on if it's easily factorable you can get it by hand um, I'll I'll consider it but not everybody will have a graphing utility calculator so I'm not fighting the forces. Okay. Um, the next question. Um, would require you to do a little thinking here. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. If you're familiar with synthetic division, it might be good for you to use this. Here's x cubed plus 2x squared plus 5x minus 8. Now they do give you three answer choices, so technically you could try to substitute these. Just remember the following. You're basically trying to not make this 0. And so the answer that makes a 0 will actually be your answer, as strange as that sounds. So you substitute in, for example, uh, let's use negative 1 cubed plus 2 times uh, negative 1 cubed uh, squared plus 5 times negative 1 minus 8. Does, does it equal 0? It does not. You would do the same thing for the 3. And now uh, I will do the 1. So 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared. 
uh, plus 5 times 1 minus 8. And when you do the math here, this does equal 0. This is a discontinuity. This, because it's 0. Because it's 0 means that that will be your your asymptote in a sense. All right, number 13. Now we get into the fun stuff. So let's start with number 13. Number 13, we have y equals x squared plus 4x, and we're looking at it between x equals 1 and x equals 12, I'm sorry, 7, where I get 12 from, I don't know. And in a question like this, um, what you would start with is finding the rate of change. So we're going to take that first derivative. So you get 2x plus 4. And we're going to substitute in 2 times 1 plus... 4, which is 6, and we're going to do 2 times 7 plus 4, which is 18. And if we take 6 plus 18 and divide it by 2, this gives us 24 over 2, which is simply 12. Okay, let's take a look at the next question, uh, number 14. Uh, let's see the question, number 14, find the average rate of change for f of x is equal to the square root of 2x over the given interval where x is 2 and x is 8. All right, so to finish this part of the question, you would take basically the f of b value minus f of a and divide it by b minus a. Plugging in the numbers, you'll obtain, um, in this case, I guess, 4 minus 2. All of that over 8 minus 2. And this results in 2 over 6, which reduces to 1 third. So remember, all you're doing here is to get f of b, for example, um, plug in the number. So if I took 8 and plugged it in here and solved, I would get 4. If I plug 2 in here, I would get uh, the 2. And down here is this 8 minus 2. All right. So the question 15. Question 15, you have... Um, Suppose an object moves along uh, an y-axis so that its location given to you is y equals f of x is equal to x squared plus x. And uh, we take that first derivative. We want to find the instantaneous velocity at x4. So if I take that first derivative... I end up with 2x plus 1. And so if I plug in the 4, 2 times 4 plus 1, we get our value. So that's question 15, 16. We're going back to the differentia uh, differentiating using the four-step process. So um, it says use the four-step pro process to find the first derivative given f of x 
is equal to 5x squared minus 3x. And so if you remember, it's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. We technically already have f of x in the formula. We already have this. That's this piece. What we need to solve for is, let's find what f of x plus h gives us. So we take our formula, which is 5 parentheses x squared, but in our case, we're going to have to find x plus h squared, minus 3 times x plus h. All right, so that means we have to FOIL our square x plus h which gives us um, 5 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus, uh, I'm not going to do double negative, uh, minus our our 3x plus 3h. I still have to distribute the 5, so I have 5x squared plus 10xh plus 5h squared minus 3x minus 3h, because remember, you're distributing this as well. Um, and then lastly, we're going to put our minus sign. And once again, this is 5x squared minus 3x. So remember that's going to come in as well. That negative is going to affect this. So I can distribute the negative, and so this is what I obtain. All right. Now, the 5x squared is going to cancel with negative 5x squared. Positive 3x is going to cancel with negative 3x. And now remember that <clears throat> h divides into all of these terms. So you can literally write it as 10xh over h plus 5h squared over h minus 3h over h. And once again, the h's do cancel. So this cancels, leaving you negative 3. This reduces, leaving you 5h. So far, that's what we have. And the H is canceled here. You're left with 10X. So it looks like your final choice would be 10X plus 5H minus 3. Okay, number 17. I just need to remind you in number 17 that if you're looking for the first derivative of a number, whether it's symbolic or not, it's going to be zero. So pi is just 3.14 and it's a gamut of numbers that follow. If I'm looking for it's the first derivative, it's still a number. That's simple. It would help you to think of this like you could think of uh, the question being something like f of x equals 6. What is the first derivative? It's no different. It's still zero. Okay, we're now looking at number 18. Number 18, we're going to be given the function f of x is given to us to, as 2x to the 5th plus 6x to the 8th. That first derivative becomes 10x to the 4th plus 48x to the seventh. Remember, it's you multiply first. It's the first derivative, so multiply first and take away one. Unlike the antiderivative, which is the opposite, you add one, then you divide. You don't even multiply, you divide. Number 19, 
they're giving us f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth power plus 6x to the seventh power. And we're going to take that first derivative and we get 12x to the third plus 42x to the sixth. Again, multiply first, take away one. Multiply first, take away one. All right, number 20. Number 20 is the same thing. You have been given y equals 3t to the negative 4 minus 5t to the negative 1. Okay, so we multiply first. So negative 12, t, take away 1, negative 5. Multiply first, so we get positive 5t, take away 1, you're left with negative 2. Now the answer choices here happen to have the t's and their negatives right alongside, but they could also do this and drop the variable to make a positive. Just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna stop this video here. This is the first 20 questions. Part two is coming up.